Welcome back to the Touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. It is the fan zone. And let's just delve direct on to the fan zone as usual. I'm joined by Fred Openda here, Joe Sainer, and Tyrus Wayaki. Transfer deadline yesterday, and one of the most surprising transfers was former Watford striker Idioni Gallo, the Nigerian international, joining Manchester United on a six-month loan deal. Did you expect that, Fred? Uh, you know, the rumors uh, started servicing like uh, a day before the, the transfer deadline. That, yes. You know what? Odio Nogalo might, might be on his way to Manchester, and I did not believe it. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but uh, as the, the window was closing down, uh, the rumors became stronger that yes. he might not even have uh, undergone a medical with United. Yeah, no, because, they, they, because of the time, actually. Yes. Yes. So, uh, Waking up in the morning, I found that the transfer happened. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really don't get the sense because uh -huh. uh, they have Marshall who can play in that uh, through the midfield, although his, his preference is uh, from <coughs> the wings. They have a young Greenwood who's not really performing that bad, he's netting in the goals. Uh, and getting a player of uh, a 30 year old uh, a striker who had uh, gone to the Chinese league. I don't, I don't, I don't really get the, <laughs> the Joe, point. It, it is not the first one that Manchester United has done. This, I think, I think back in 2010 also, Ferguson signed Sebastian Lasso to join Manchester United. Is Ologuna Social also pulling such kind of a move to teach his young strikers how to score, or what can we say brought in such kind of a transfer? I mean. Uh, we have to first go to the genesis. The genesis was that Marcus Rashford sustained an injury. Yes. At that point, it wasn't that serious injury, so you had the options of, Ma of Martial, Rashford, and Greenwood. Mm -hmm. But now, with the injury of yeah. uh, Marcus Rashford, you would think that you would need an extra striker. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, in the January transfer window, strikers are not available at yes. the price that you might want to invest in. Mm -hmm. Remember, once you buy a uh, a player in January, you're looking at a two, three year contract spanning two, two transfer windows. Is it a risk in terms of the investment? Mm -hmm. Do you think he can perform? Mm -hmm. Okay. So until last night, and I was following up. Yes. Manchester United were following up on Joshua King from mm -hmm. Bournemouth. Yes. Okay. They a never former, had a chance to yes, get a him. former United lad. Yes. They couldn't have a chance because what <coughs> Bournemouth right now are struggling. Yes. You know not to be relegated and losing such a key striker was a problem. Yes. So for them to go for Igalo, you'd look at it from two sides as a Manchester United fan. You look at it as a desperate move mm -hmm. or you look at it as an optional move. Yeah. I would look at it as an optional move. Why? It brings a different attacking um, sort of uh, structure yeah. to Manchester United. Mm -hmm. Igalo will hold up the ball and invite the likes of Martial, invite the, luck, the likes of James, invite the likes of Lingard to push the ball forward and to create that counter-attack. Yeah. However, if you look at it from the other side, you look at it as a desperate move. Why? Because since January 2nd, there has been this burning idea that you should go for Edison Cavani. Mm -hmm. yeah. A complete striker, mm -hmm. tried, tested, but okay. PSG could not let him go. At PSG were willing, were willing to let him go. But again, you have to understand the economics of transfers, deadline transfers. Yeah. PSG will think, are we going to get the right amount right now? Mm -hmm. Are we thinking about extending his contract? Because there was a rumor that his contract was, was up at the end of the summer. Mm -hmm. Now they're looking into extending his contract. Why? Yeah. Because they believe they can extend it to another one year. Mm -hmm. He gives them a decent performance until January they can get a better fee for him. Yeah. So I, from, from a Manchester United standpoint, it's a different sort of attacking move. It's a backup for Rashford. Um, let's just hope you know, it works out. It's a, it's a short term loan, yeah. obviously six months, mm -hmm. uh, you know, three million pounds spent. So let's see how it will work out. A big one there. Tell us, Adrian Igalo was not the only player that Manchester United brought in this transfer window. They also managed to get Sporting Lisbon, Portuguese attacking midfielder Bruno Fernandes onto the Manchester United side. Is that going to revolutionize that midfield of Sporting Lisbon, of Manchester, of Manchester United? United. Yeah. I think it should mm -hmm. in, to a great extent because when you watched uh, Manchester United play the other day against Manchester City and they yeah. brought in James, he kind of struggled 
in that situation. He's usually a very reliable player and he delivers yeah. every other time he comes on the field. But this particular match showed that the lack of experience and exposure for him yeah. exposed him in the sense that he could not deliver. He was kind of lost, even yeah. though the potential was evident. Mm -hmm. The young man has talent, the young man has skill, the young man is hungry to learn and deliver. Yeah. But in that kind of situation, when faced against giants, yeah. he was sort of like a fish out of water, yeah. not the usual gems that you're used to. So I think this signing is, is absolutely spot on. I think it's brilliant. It's meant to sort them out as they look into Europe yeah. this month, yeah. playing in the Europa League, the, the, not the, just in the Premier League. The, the question will be, Bruno Fernandes is an attacking midfielder who's coming to Manchester United, and then you've got Paul Pogba there also. Is it a matter of competition, or is it a door opening for no Paul Pogba to leave for Real Madrid or any other team? It depends how the season pans out, because yeah. uh, it might be an opening for Pogba to leave, depending yeah. how the season turns out, yeah. or a compliment for Pogba in that, yeah. uh -huh. in that in midfield. That midfield. Yeah. Exactly, because now if Fernandes, uh, uh, Bruno Fernandes can uh, go forward, yeah. then Pogba can be able to feed him the ball. Yes. Uh, maybe with a young uh, Mark Tomine, uh <laughs> besides Pogba. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, I've just seen that uh, Nemanja Matic yeah. has just extended... Uh, wants to extend or just extended his co uh, he wants to yeah, extend his contract, contract yeah. so I, I don't know how he'll be able to juggle out uh, that midfield yeah. but uh, right now uh, with those pr players that united have in the midfield they are very very good options the problems uh, seem uh, the problem seems to be in the in the wing yeah. uh, especially the james wing as he's saying because this is a young man that uh, uh, united got from the championship and they want to uh, put all that pressure on him of playing that game in, game out. I think he should have at least first come into United, yeah. uh, get someone whom he can look upon yeah. so that he can learn. Mm -hmm. But right now, the pressure is upon him to yeah. perform. Since he's called the first two, two three games, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, I've not seen James again scoring. So uh, I think they have put too much pressure too on much him. Pressure so I think they should get another option yeah. from that uh, from that uh, uh, from that wing. Yeah. But as far as the midfield is concerned, I think United right, right now are set to go. The other problem might might be yeah. the defense. Defense. Yes, the defense. Yeah, Maybe you, never you got you got a, a very good one, Bisaka. Yeah. Maguire is not reliable. Mm -hmm. He needs to step up. He needs to stop with that price tag. He needs to step up uh, and maybe get another partner in that uh, yeah. in that uh, uh, central defense and maybe another left back. And then I think you'll be able now to uh, compete uh, at the top level. Well, well Manchester United are on a rebuilding process, and now Oluguna Solskjaer has got five players he's brought in on to that team. Let's see how that one pans out. He's playing this evening against Hulls. We'll be seeing how that match will be coming away. Before we talk about the preview of the matches that are happening, also. Arsenal managed to bring in a defense. Cedric Suarez on loan from Southampton and Pablo Mari, a defender from Flamengo. Seems to be a bit a tactical frenzy for Mikel Arteta to have such kind of players. He never went all out buying, he went to buy just two key players that he wants on his side. Uh, when he came in, when he came in, his first idea was to have a really strong right back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And also have a central defender who, left who's left footed. Yes. That was his instructions. Mm -hmm. And once that was taken into consideration, he went straight for them. Um, I mean, Mari has been playing very well for Flamengo. He'll bring in a sort of depth in the defense mm -hmm. whereby you'll have a ball playing defender. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now it can allow the rest of the rest of the other defenders, Socrates or Mustafi, they can cover from behind. Yeah. Now, and then you have a right back who can also play as a centre back. So if you're going with a with a formation of three at the back, you can still count on Suarez. Mm -hmm. If you're going four at the back, you can still count on Suarez. And that will bring possibly a better defensive solidity than one than what has been happening before. Because mm -hmm. obviously there's been frailties yes. in um, Arsenal's defence. But that being said, going forward again, I think the link up Aubameyang Pepe. Yeah. or Lacazette Pepe, mm -hmm. or Lacazette Aubameyang, mm -hmm. 
Ateta needs to get that sorted out because in that attack there are so many goals. Yeah. And I'm very happy that he did not even you know interfere with the attacking yeah. part of Arsenal mm -hmm. and he concentrated on the defensive part. Yeah. I think those two purchases, mm -hmm. yes, they're, they're loan signings, but they're very good signings mm -hmm. for deadline transfer in January. Yeah, a big one there for Arsenal. They are also back on that one and they are really pushing at. But Aston Villa also helped the East African nation of Tanzania to make history when they signed Mbona Samantha from Genk and he was given 67 minutes against Leicester City and now Aston Villa are in the Carabao Cup final. It's a big win for Aston Villa to get Mbona Samantha. I think it's a bigger win for East Africa yeah. because Aston Villa would have bought anyone to fill in those shoes that they needed to fill yeah. and life would have gone on. Mm -hmm. but. To have one of us going out there and showing the kind of potential we have back here, where he is from, mm -hmm. it's a bigger plus for us than it is for Aston Villa. Yeah. So I'm more happy for the East African region, for Tanzanians, for Kenyans, because we are now also claiming a part of Samata. So yes, it's it's a bigger win for us and mm -hmm. our football yes. from this neck of the woods because in the past the concentration has been as the closest they've got um, to East Africa is usually around Central Africa. They are Democratic Republic of Congo. You remember Lomano, Lua Lua, mm -hmm. over ten years ago playing in the English Premier League. Yes, and. Uh, the concentration has mainly been in West Africa, mm -hmm. but now to have Wanyama there, even though he's not playing much mm -hmm. from East Africa, and then to have yet another one of our crop, yeah. I think it's a huge plus for yeah. us. But I'm obviously hoping it will be a huge plus for Aston Villa as yeah. well, because then they'll take uh, our, our talent more seriously yeah. and they'll say, we got a guy from there and he did ABCD for us. Yeah. So that's a place we can fish from. And Aston Villa are back on the Premier League and they are really fighting hard on the, on the English Premier League, sorry, but they have got to be commended for making on to the Carabao Cup final. You saw their fans the way they were celebrating there after defeating Leicester City. It is a big win for Aston Villa, they say. Of course, of course, uh, now that, uh, you know, uh, Leicester City had uh, some laps uh, yeah. before they, they faced Aston Villa. They, mm -hmm. they were I think their form had uh, really dipped, yeah. and uh, Aston Villa uh, uh, took advantage of that, yeah. and they were able to nick in those two goals uh, uh, and progress to the final where they they face Manchester City. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, concerning uh, uh, Samata, I think it shows that uh, the football in the region is really uh, rising. The the, the 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 quality of of our football yes. as as the. the East African uh, uh, region yeah. is is growing because, uh, as he has said, Aston Villa would have gone out there and, and purchased anyone. Yeah. But uh, being able to spot on uh, Buana, Buana Samata and bring him on on board, yeah. and I, I, I really don't. Uh, he had a, a very good chance of scoring, but uh, you know it's football. Yeah. Uh, he didn't get that goal, but hopefully uh, going forward uh, the upcoming matches he'll be able to to get these kind of chances and, yes. and nick the goals in. And uh, you know, uh, as we are saying, East African, we, we, we hope we are not uh, forgetting that Ayub uh, Timbe, Timbe just uh, <laughs> signed <laughs> for for Reading yes, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yesterday. So. Uh, the, the, the quality of our game is improving each day yeah. uh, and it's it's a very very good thing uh, that we can see uh, East Africans somewhere yeah. in in European football Joe we are talking about transfer ins but let's go out for now transfer out Jose Mourinho in Tottenham letting Christian Eriksen go <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of that of it's, all the players that no, 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 you have to good. let go I, 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 think, I, I think if you look at it from two sides, yeah. there's the club philosophy uh -huh. and then there's the player's philosophy. Uh -huh. The club's philosophy is we still need to make sure that Tottenham is one of the youngest squads in the Premier in League. The Premier, yeah. And still the most exciting uh -huh. gameplay in the Premier League. Yes. And that's why they were very fast after they sold Ericsson, they went straight for Steven Bedwin. Right? Yeah. Because Steven Bedwin offers attack on both wings and sometimes can play in the middle complementing that fast attack that Jose Mourinho wants to start, using the likes of Moura, Hons, Hon, uh, mm. Sumin right now, mm -hmm. and now Bedouin, and then you know pushing it up close with um, Deli Ali. Yeah. If you look at it from the player's perspective, 
Inter Milan offered Ericsson 220,000 pounds yeah. per week. Mm -hmm. At your late stages, in your, in your early 30s, okay, that is good money for you as a player. Because yeah. at the end of the day, some players will look at it for the gain of the game, some players will look at it for the gain of the money. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. That is one. Two, that same amount is double what he was yeah. getting at Tottenham. At Tottenham. You understand? Yeah. So all these incentives, and again, still playing the Champions League, mm -hmm. okay? S playing in the same team with Lukaku, people that you're familiar with, mm. Ashley Young, people that you're familiar with, okay? Yeah. And being the creative, yes. the creative passer to Lukaku to score more goals. Because yeah. if you yeah. watch the, the game Inter Milan played against Calgary the other day, mm -hmm. they led, and then immediately when Calgary had scored yeah. through Nangolan, who was in Inter Milan, yes. they could not get that creative juice anymore in between you know, this in between the midfield and the attacking yes. and the attacking end. So that's what Christensen will bring to Inter Milan. A big one there for Inter Milan and uh, tell us now Inter Milan have gone ahead with Conte to bring in mostly most of the major EPL players. We have seen Ashley Young also joining Inter Milan in this window. Victor Moses is on Inter Milan. Reda Lukaku joined Inter Milan last season. Now they have got Ericsson. Chris Three. Smalling left earlier yeah. than and everyone. It seems that Antonio Conte is signing most of these experienced players to try and go ahead and defeat Juventus. Does he have that likelihood of going head-to-head -head against Juventus this season? Um, just let me confirm. Chris Smalling left for Roma. Roma. For Roma. Yes, yes, Roma, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I needed to add that bit. Yeah. Does Antonio Conte have what it takes to challenge Juventus? Mm. I think he does. Mm. But what it is is that Juventus seem to be the complete package. Mm -hmm. Antonio Conte is still filling up his bits and pieces yeah. here to, to complete the puzzle. So that's the tall order for them. Yeah. So they're up against a side that's more or less complete and they're still building their ambitions. But they're building them up pretty fast. And the signings that he's had so far, Lukaku, they've settled pretty well. Italy is not an easy place to go and perform. Yeah. So many players in the past have gone there and failed to shine. Mm -hmm. I mean, it almost destroyed Thierry Henry's career, but look what he turned out to be when he ended up in England. Yeah. So it's, it's very encouraging. It's a plus for Conte, Conte's managerial skills. It's a plus for how friendly Inter Milan are as a place to go and work as yes. a footballer. Mm -hmm. But they're up against a side that's more or less complete. But there are those who argue Juve is not complete. They're over-reliant on Cristiano Ronaldo. Mm -hmm. If you remove Cristiano Ronaldo from the mix, yeah. then you expose them. And the, you, you look at them and say, no, they're not entirely complete. But you, they've you been go winning the further, without Cristiano. You go Cristiano. on further. You, you go, the, why have them? They won the Champions League. Yeah at their most complete form. Mm -hmm. You see, that's another way to look mm -hmm. at it. And then you can go further and say, uh, at the back, they were over-reliant on Chiellini. You remove Chiellini, and Ajax can beat Juve home and away, or yeah. th that kind of thing. So there are loopholes mm -hmm. which injury can exploit. A, a, a injury can leave them out to exploitation. Yes. So it's a bit of a gamble, but I think the tall order between Juve and Inter, if we were to look at those two, I think it would be between Inter would have the, the tall order yeah. more tilting towards more, the, more on their side. Juve yeah. are almost there, although Napoli exposed them. You are watching the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro, and talking to us here today, I've got Fredo Penda, Joe Saina, and Tyrus Weyaki. The transfer window is over. Now it's back to business, and we'll be seeing how teams are going to perform. Liverpool brought only one player, and that is Minamino from Red Salisburg, who has joined that side. But let's go ahead and look at some of the matches that will be coming your way this afternoon. The early kickoff today, we've got Leicester versus Chelsea in that match at the King Power Stadium. Big one for Frank Lampard to go against Leicester because he's trying to get that stronghold of the top four position. And Leicester, for them, they're chasing the second position or the third position so far. Of course, I, I think uh, of the two managers, uh, uh, the, the guy is likely to be under more pressure will be Frank Lambert mm -hmm. uh, because I remember he, he dropped uh, two points at home against a, a ten-man Arsenal yes. uh, uh, who had uh, lost, uh, who were man down uh, starting the 25th minute. Yeah. So I, I, I think it's, for, for them it was like 
uh, two points uh, lost Drop. than one, one point one gained. gained. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, facing a, a Leicester side that has frailties currently, I think he should be able to take uh, that advantage and maybe try to, to get the three points. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, if, if they are going to, 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 lose, uh, to lose the two points, if yeah. they are not going, mm -hmm. getting a draw, then United win and then there'll be hell a lot of uh, pressure on them. Yeah. And then before, 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 before I continue on that match, uh, the, the, the Ericsson issue, yeah. I think it's a win-win for, for, for both the for club both. and the player. Uh -huh. Because yeah. now the player has got a very, very good contract mm -hmm. at Inter. Yeah. And uh, for him being on the last six months of his contract, yes. With the Tottenham. Just with Tottenham, trust yeah. me, getting those 22 million <laughs> pounds, yeah. uh, uh, 22 million pounds was a, a scoop. For, yeah. for, for Tottenham. So yeah. I think it was a win-win situation for yeah. both parties. Uh -huh. So uh, hopefully uh, the, the machine that Conte is trying uh, to, to, to create. build, to create in Italy, should yeah. be able to challenge yeah. uh, 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 Juventus yeah. uh, for the title. Although I see also Lazio uh, are not bad. They bad are not Leo. doing badly. Uh, yes, so yeah. I think we, we, should be, uh, uh, we should be able to see a, ve a very competitive uh, uh, Italian league uh, towards the end of this season, yeah. as compared to the, to the, to the previous uh, maybe two, three seasons. <laughs> well, yes. big, big one there, Joe. Now, Chelsea, the, their transfer ban was lifted. They were supposed actually to go out and buy players, and everybody, when Frank Lampard came over, was like, this is a young team. When the transfer window comes up, he might sign good players to come and, let's say, improve the squad. But at the end of the day, he did not sign anyone. Yeah, I, I was watching his press conference yesterday, yeah. and um, he he answered all questions. No, yeah. are you bringing someone in? No. <laughs> are you letting anyone out? No. no. Um, yeah. I, is there any is there any loan signings? No. no. Yeah. In and out? No. Yeah. Um, I think it will come back and bite him because mm. of the attacking side that Chelsea yeah. have mm -hmm. that, that Chelsea have in terms of the players. Yeah. Yes, you have Tammy Abraham and you have Mitch. We're not even talking about Giroud because you've not been playing Giroud. Yes. And he, towards the end of the season, you need those headers from Giroud. You need, it, you need him to hold the gameplay so that the likes of Mason Mount, uh, Carla Monson, Odoi can come in. Yes. Kante can also come in and do some stuff. Ruben loftus stick has come back yes. from injury. So you need someone to hold that ball so that all these attack-minded players go in. And that's Giroud. And I believe that's the reason why he was not let loose yesterday because Tottenham were after him. Inter Milan again. Yes. were after Juru, mm -hmm. um, Lazio after Juru. Yes. Okay. So I understand that yeah. it's good that he did not let go of any players, but I believe that Cavani again was on the plate. Okay. It was a whole week of speculations with Cavani. Mm. They could have closed the deal. Titus, big one there. Leicester going against Chelsea this afternoon, but also we have got a team that doesn't seem that it might be losing any time soon. And that's <laughs> Liverpool going against Southampton this after. They only signed one player, that is Minamino, who came, the Japanese player who came in for them. But they're going against Southampton this afternoon. Do you see any likelihood of a draw consider or a lose, considering that Southampton are really, really on a rise at the moment? I like the fact that Southampton gave them a bit of a scare uh, not too long ago. And that sort of switched on something, some bulb in Liverpool's head, yeah. because it's those small teams, or those that look like small teams, yes. that can upset your run of form. And mm -hmm. Liverpool have been having such a run of form, mm -hmm. not playing excellent football. That's not their agenda. Their mm -hmm. agenda is to get the results. Yes. And it's understandable, they're being coached by a German tactician. So their game is purely German. German football is not about playing attractively like they do in Spain or having all the pace in the world almost throughout the 90 minutes like France. Yes. No, it's about everyone performing in his particular position. And they attack through the flanks, the German way. They hit you with the element of attack surprisingly and they do it sparringly. They know when to back off yes. and when to hit you. I think that's what will destroy Southampton today. And the fact that they scared Liverpool not too long ago opened up Liverpool's minds to potential adversity. I think Liverpool right now are going to upset Many those teams. who think that yeah. um, they'll crack in the face of Southampton. Mm -hmm. But they've got to do it from the get-go of the game. Because yeah. when you play a small team, let me just call them small, not out of disrespect, like yeah. Southampton. 
the longer you take to score, mm. the more confidence they yes. build, mm -hmm. yes. the more confidence they gain, yeah. the more confident they become. And a small confident team mm. can drive you out of town. It's so dangerous. Liverpool have to go right from the get-go, do the business, and sit back in the second half. When you say a small team gains <laughs> confidence, <laughs> one thing that has gained that confidence has got to be Wolves against Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> Wolves, Wolves are, are mulling giants left, right and center. So yeah. <laughs> actually they're, they're no longer a small team. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and United knowing that they're going to face them. Yeah. I, I'm not sure whether Fernandez, Bruno, Bruno Fernandez will be yeah, playing. He's, <laughs> <laughs> he's going to play this game. Yeah. No, I, I, I really didn't want him to, to, to play this game uh, because yeah. it might spoil yeah. his his debut mm -hmm. for United. Yeah. Because the, the, guy, the, the way these guys, they have not, it's not the first time they are going to do it. Yes. They have beaten United mm -hmm. uh, yeah. before and yeah. they can do it. They have shown that they can do it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a game that United have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm and not go all out at attacking, attacking because once the likes of Jimenez get that ball, yeah. they might be able to bite them at any time. So they have to be disciplined and wait for their chances, yeah. be patient. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it, it's not a game like the one to, uh, of Liverpool that, uh, as he's saying, they, they, they should wrap up the game in the first, uh, f mm -hmm. first, uh, f first uh, Wolves half. Wolves tend to come back exactly. stronger as the game grows on Yes, grows yes. On. So uh, United have just to be disciplined and wait for their chance. What do you make of that clash, Joe? I mean, United need to play to their strengths today. Yeah. Um, you've signed an attacking midfielder. You've signed a holding striker. Yes. And you have two other midfielders. Mm -hmm. I watched the game against Man City at the 1-1 nil, although yes. they did not go into the Carabao final. Yeah. And the way Matic was sitting just before Maguire mm -hmm. is very important today also. Yeah. Because their attacking capabilities of wolves especially on the wings yeah. with their big guy yeah it's going to cause them a problem so if they can play a, sy a system whereby you have for the back now you no, have two no, holding no, th midfielders th think of a system where matic is not in the game <laughs> because he's suspended well again <laughs> i go back to the same system oh actually yeah. it's suspended, yeah, it's suspended yeah. if you have if one. you have again two where you have mctomney and you have fred yes okay yeah Fred has days that he plays brilliantly. He's a good days and, and then he has <laughs> bad, bad days. days yeah. You never know, and that's the thing about Manchester United. You never yes. know which team will turn up. Yes. You know, uh, when I was watching the game against Man City, I knew that game is going to end. You know, three nil, three -nil to Man City. Four, yeah. But you see, they they kept on clawing, clawing. Although Man City were really poor, yes. in their finishing, finishing yeah. they were really poor. Yeah. So again, if you look at that setup again, if you have McTominay, you have Fred. Yeah. Okay, holding. Hmm. And then now you have Bruno just in front of them yes. with the support of Martial and James. Yes. And then you put Igalo as a holding yes. and again a holding number nine. Yeah. Why a holding number nine? He's not that fast anymore to have these counterattacks. But James, Martial, Bruno can yes. go forward. And that is the only way I believe mm -hmm. that you can get points against Wolves today. Mm -hmm. I, think playing by I, your I think Igalo is not eligible to play for today and because of the registration. If he's, not, be, if, he's not, if he's not eligible to play today, I think Greenwood Ma Mark again, and IP use Greenwood, yeah, yeah, Greenwood and then use the yeah. counter attack. Exactly. Yeah. You know, we have to work with the players we have. Yeah. And that, you know, there's no more time. We can't keep on saying <laughs> Manchester United doesn't have players. Yeah. We work you with the players that are there. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. I think for Wolves, yeah. really, what they need to do yeah. is, and this sounds a bit controversial, but I'll tell you why I'm saying it. They need to get a Dama Traore off playing from the flank and put him at center forward. Like oh, Henry, like <laughs> yes. put him at center forward like we used to with Henry Motego when he played for Shabana, when he played for Harambe Stars, when he played for the now defunct Kenya. Well, Kenya Brewer has changed names to Tusk FC, yes. so it's not entirely defunct. It's just a name that's defunct. And he did wonders. Adama Traore is to Wolves what Henry Motego was to us. Yes in those earlier days, okay. um, if any of you remember him. That's yeah. what they need to do, because in the flank, yeah. he's, kind, he's doing what he's supposed to do, yeah. but he's limited in the sense that he's now an assist, assist provider. Yes. Yet we know he's a poacher, he's a goal-scoring guy, he's got those natural instincts and abilities in to him. To go ahead and score. Yes, get him to play 
in the center mm -hmm. and you will see him killing guys one after the other. And I borrow this, when we used to play schools rugby, yeah. we had a guy who was as big as Traore. Well, not literally, but you get the, the physique. Yeah, that kind good. Of physique. He used to play at wing, and yeah. we were wasting him at wing. So we got a coach, and he said, after one training session, he looked at us and he said, move to fast center. Yeah. So he played in the, I'm telling you, we demolished strong halls like Nairobi School, Strathmore School. Yeah. We changed that completely. Get, it's just about tactics, really. Yeah. And once you get those tactics spot on, you're going to beat Manchester United, Manchester City. Liverpool. <laughs> he cannot say Liverpool. He cannot say Liverpool. <laughs> that, that, that one, you know, the one game I was forgetting is Tottenham Man City tomorrow at 7.30. Mm -hmm. That's a big one, Joe. Mm -hmm. Mourinho and Guardiola, all the adversaries coming back together. How do you see that one going? Mourinho is going to play an attacking game. Yeah. He's brought in Steven, Bedouin from PSV, mm -hmm. a very pacey winger who can also play as an attacking midfielder. You have Hong Sumin, who will play forward. You have um, uh, Deli Ali, who might be just be also, behind. Also, this kid also improved. Nolensko, Nolenso, uh, yeah. Yeah, Nolenso also. also he's coming in. Yeah. And then you also have, um, you also have uh, Mora on, yeah. the, on the wing. Where I think he's going to play that attacking, uh, sort of attacking um, uh, setup is because of two things. Tomorrow, Manchester City are going to play possessive game. <coughs> possession. Yes, he hasn't bought anyone. He doesn't believe in buying people on the last day. Yes. He bought Laporte mm -hmm. two seasons ago, but it was early January. Yes. So what he's going to do tomorrow is the same team. He's going to play his same possession team. Mm -hmm. But one thing that Mourinho is going to do tomorrow is going to play on the counter-attack. Yeah. And that's something mm -hmm. that Kyle Walker should look out for. Benjamin Mendy on both wings should look because out for. Because Tottenham forwards are really fast. They're really fast. Yeah. You understand? And I don't... I'm, I'm, I don't want to be disrespectful to, to Fernandinho, but he's not, he doesn't have the same pace anymore. Yeah. Otamendi doesn't have the same pace. Okay? So, tomorrow, might be I'm, seeing Tottenham, very good, uh, yeah. I'm seeing Tottenham getting the three points tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, what I can prediction. say is that yes. if, 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 if Man City are going, because uh, 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 Mourinho is really going to miss Ken. Yeah, I am. Last Very time much. I saw uh, Mora uh, starting as a false nine. Yes. Uh, maybe that's what may, might happen tomorrow mm -hmm. also. Uh, so but, uh, yeah. Front. Yes. But uh, I'm seeing uh, a situation whereby if Ban City really uh, work on their finishing yes. uh, <laughs> and leave whatever they did yeah. uh, against Man United midweek yes. and finish off uh, their chances, I, I think they'll be able to get that win. Yeah, big wins are being looked everywhere, and also we have one that is going in one of the greatest football cities in the in the world. That is Madrid. It is the Madrid derby yeah. this afternoon, and if Madrid wins, they have got a chance to go five points clear of Barcelona. Yeah, I, and I and place. I think and I think that they have every chance to to do that because yeah. uh, if you look at Atletico, they have been very sluggish of late. Yeah. They lost uh, the Copa del Rey uh, uh, match against a third. Uh, Tire team uh, yeah. last week, yeah. uh, so I, I think if if uh, uh, Zinedine Zidane is going to 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 uh, get his uh, tact uh, right uh, this evening, he might be able to uh, get away with the three points and give him that firm grip. Uh, oh, on top of that, exactly. Yes. Joe, what do you make of that game this evening? I believe Atletico Madrid will want to revenge their yeah. loss to Barcelona in the Copa del Rey, the semi-finals. Yeah, yeah. uh, they are going to revenge. Um, Real Madrid have made a very good signing of this young boy from Brazil. Mm -hmm. And it shows again what Zidane is looking for. He's changing the game of Real Madrid. He's not, he's, he's, he doesn't have a Cristiano in mind anymore. Yes. He doesn't have Benzema in mind anymore. He needs to change this team is into that, an attacking is team. A, a, like a transformation yes. or a change. A proper the transformation team. whereby they're going to be playing counter-attack. Yes. It's very hard to hear that. Real Madrid don't play counter attack, but if you look at the signings <laughs> that they're making, yes. it's counter attack that football that they yeah. want to go for. Yeah. And I believe today that is the same thing they're going to do to Atletico Madrid. Mm -hmm. However, Atletico Madrid have themselves to blame because they had a chance to sign again Cavani. Uh, they okay. did not. Yeah, actually, and they yeah. did not follow up on that. Yes. Okay. Yes, you. Yes, you have. Um, you, you have. You have your centre <coughs> forward. You have. Uh, Carrasco who's back. Yanni Carrasco who's back again. I don't know if he'll be eligible to play today, but. Real Madrid are going to put a, a different game today, mm -hmm. a more counter-attacking. Yes. They'll sit back, wait for you to do all your possession, and then counter-attack. 
What do you make of, do you think Madrid is going with this one this time around? I know Atletico Madrid shocked us the other day when they lost to a third tier team. Yes. And well, I'll say football is a crazy game, but yeah. derbies are even crazier. Yeah. So they start on level footing against Real Madrid. And Real Madrid are talking of counter-attacking football and pretty much Atletico Madrid play that kind of football. Yes. They're a, a technical counter-attacking side. Mm -hmm. So when I put that on the weighing scale, I can see a, a draw here in the making. I can't, yeah, they are, I can't go either side. They are Saudi Arabia uh, in the Super Cup. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't really put my money on either side. Not yeah. that I'm a betting person, mm -hmm. but if I were tempted yes. to say, uh, yeah, here, yeah, I'll, I'll hold back because to me this has all the makings of a draw. A draw. Ooh. Which match will you be following this afternoon? Uh, I'll, I'll be watching the United game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and closely, Very closely. Uh, and closely uh, <laughs> yeah. also monitoring the Chelsea game. Yes. Uh, tomorrow we have the Arsenal game and yes. then the Tottenham game. Uh -huh. And then we have the uh, NFL. Uh, we yeah. have uh, the Super Bowl. Exactly. Yeah. So a very uh, a packed weekend in yeah. terms of football, uh, football and uh, general sports. sports yes. Joe. Well, I'll be following up on the Leicester Chelsea game very keenly yeah. because that 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 number three, four, five <laughs> is yeah, very you have important. A key, really yes, and then um, as a Manchester United supporter, yeah. I'll be watching the Wolves game yeah. and hoping that we pick up points. Mm -hmm. But tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'd like to see what Tottenham will do against Man City. I think for me, for me, those three games, uh, and obviously the Real Madrid game. Yeah. But obviously, those three games would be uh, big for me. Yeah. Tyrus. I'll be following Hanover 96 mm -hmm. wow. because uh, another of my ex-trainees, apart from Ayub Timbe, is yeah. John Gudetti, who grew uh -huh. up here in Kenya in part, in spite of the fact that he's Swedish. And yes. he also signed in this January open window mm -hmm. for Hanover 96, who are a Bundesliga two side. Yes. And they're playing today. I think it's a 3 p.m. Kenya time kickoff. Yes. So uh, I, I want to follow that up. Second game for Hanover 96. They lost in their first game narrowly, yeah. one one nil, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping uh, they can make amends for that. Yeah. And hopefully, John Gudetti will be the guy to make the headlines for them. So <laughs> I'll be I'll be there. Otherwise, I'd have watched Reading uh, because of Timbe. they having signed Timbe. Ayub Timbe yeah. as well, whom I also coached. Also but they played last mm -hmm. night. Yeah. So. It's got to be Hanover 96. Over to you, Joe. And also studio. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should be doing live reports again. Because I have a mic in my hand already. Yeah? Over to you, Joe, in studio. And also, I think another game we should look out for um, is a Borussia Dortmund game. Yeah. Um, Haaland. It, yeah, it Haaland. pains me. Uh -huh. yes. It you means, a chance how, to do you, sign how do you go from Haaland to, to Odegaard? Odegaard. Odegaard. <laughs> <laughs> it is first game we have to score two goals. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it is first, first game, three yes. goals. Yes. Second yes. game, two, two goals. goals. Yes. Five goals but so it, far. It shows you the dynamics of how players now are looking at clubs. Mm -hmm. You know, Manchester United, one of the biggest clubs in the world. And certain players will say, you know what? No, no, no. no, no. Let me go to. Let me go to a lesser renowned team mm -hmm. yeah. like Borussia Dortmund. Mm -hmm. Let me go even to Hertha uh, BSC. Yeah. Let me even go to Muchang mm -hmm. yeah. But not go to Manchester United. Yeah. That's wow. where the problem is <laughs> with the team. That's where we finish off the touchline right here on Y254. I've been joined by Tyra Swayaki. Joe Sainer and Fred Openda. Many things are happening this weekend. We have got the Super Bowl happening tomorrow. The Super Bowl 54 will be happening. The Australian Open final is also happening this weekend. First time Grand Slam winner can Thiem go against Djokovic, who is going on for his 17th Grand Slam title. How will that one be panning out? Remember, Kenya is also playing New Zealand at 5 this afternoon. So it's a big weekend when it comes to sports events in the country. The touchline will be here to give you all those details. On behalf of everyone who has made this broadcast a success, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. <laughs>